Hey, Rivers here from Some Cool Tech, and today I've got a very interesting media player from Minix called the Z64. This player's got an Intel processor and a fully functional version of Windows 8.1. It's also available in an Android version, so we'll take a look at that a little bit too. The Z64 is designed to be a set-top box for media viewing, but it can also be used as a lower power desktop computer. As a media player running Windows, it gives you a lot of options for video playback. And as a PC, this has an incredibly compact design. You can even stick it on the back of a monitor and create an extremely thin, compact computer. Now let's take a look at the hardware. So on the back here, you've got an HDMI port that outputs all the way up to full 1080p. It's got 10100 Ethernet port and an analog audio out port as well as your power port over here. And on the side, you've got two USB 2.0 ports as well as a micro SD card slot, which I've tested up to cards of 128 gigabytes. It'd probably work on 256 gigabyte cards too as well when they uh, become available. And then you've got your power button over here. And uh, this is actually really nice to have. A lot of media players don't have them and I wish they did. Now let's talk about the hardware inside. A lot of media players I've used run a Rock Chip or AM Logic ARM based processor, but the Z64 uses an Intel CPU. This quad core processor is based on the Bay Trail core, which is used in laptops and tablets. It's fast and pretty powerful, I've noticed from my testing so far. Anyway, it performs very well as a media player. Other hardware features of the Z64 include 2 gigabytes of DDR3 DRAM, Bluetooth 4.0, Wi-Fi 802.11n, and most importantly, 32 gigabytes of flash memory, which comes in really handy for storing games and apps and even some media. Okay, let's take a look at some of the accessories that you'll probably want for the Z64W. That's the Windows version. You're going to probably want a full keyboard like this with a touchpad on it. Uh, second choice would be maybe a keyboard and a mouse if you're using it for a computer. But if you're using it for a media player, this will work great. You could also use a remote like this guy here, which has a keyboard on the back. So that will work good because in Windows you always have to log on to things and it seems like you just need to type all the time. So this mouse will work pretty good on there and then probably this is your third choice, just an air mouse remote control and you can use it with a, uh, the on-screen keyboard which isn't as good as the Android on-screen keyboard but it can work so this would probably be your third choice. One really cool thing you can do with the Z64 is make yourself an all-in-one computer out of a monitor for a really cheap. So all I did is I took some double-sided sticky tape and stacked it double thick so it would go past the feet and stuck it to the back of my monitor, connected up the cables, and hooked up a keyboard and mouse with Bluetooth, and I have a computer that takes up almost no space. You could do it for an Android mini PC as well, but for productivity you probably want the Windows one. So now let's take a look at the software that comes on the Z64. This is the Windows version. It's got Windows 8.1 with Bing, which is fine. It doesn't get in your way. I don't even notice that Bing is there. And other than that, it's fully functional. You can install whatever apps you want. It runs great. So I went ahead and installed the app Classic Shell, which gives you uh, basically the desktop of Windows 7 most of the time, unless you want to go over to the Windows 8 desktop. And it worked great. Anyways, let's look at the device manager so you can see it's just a regular full version of Windows. It shows your quad-core processor here. It shows your, uh, your memory for your computer as less like a hard drive, but it's basically just a, a chip with a controller in it, not an actual separate solid-state hard drive. There's also a way to bring up an on-screen keyboard if you're, say, using a remote control like an air mouse with no keyboard on it. Just go to Start Menu, Control Panel, Ease of Access, and you can choose the on-screen keyboard from there. It's not as good as the Android keyboard, though. It doesn't pop up every time you need text. It's just kind of like you minimize it and bring it up. Now let's take a look at the user interface. My goal is to use this as a media player, so it needs to be easy to use with a remote control. I tested it with many different remotes and wireless devices. I used Air Mouse remote controls with and without keyboards and remotes with touchpads. The conclusion I came to is that you really need a keyboard when using Windows because the keyboard doesn't auto pop up when you want to enter text. I'd say Android media players are easier to use with a remote control, but Windows has some big advantages when it comes to accessing content in a web browser. For example, say you want to watch some obscure Flash video page, Android might or might not work, but there's a good chance that the Z64 with Windows will work just fine. Now we come to apps. 
So it's nice that Windows has an app store, but a lot of the best apps aren't in it. So like CPU, for example, I can run it on Android to get it out of the app store and it works great. Here I had to go to CPU's website, download it and install it, and it works great, but it wasn't in the Windows app store. Don't ask me why. Anyways, you can see all the CPU information and the different system specs and frequencies and things like that right here. Another thing that did work really well on here was Netflix. It's got its own app in the App Store and it looks really good. The navigation is very nice, uh, nicer than other platforms I've tried. And video playback looks like it's in 1080p, so the quality is very nice as well. Next up is video playback using Kodi. And this player basically played every format that I threw at it. 4K, 1080p, 1080p 60 frames a second. It played everything without really any problems. And it was very smooth, just liquid smooth. So here's the 1080p footage that's 60 frames a second that used to kind of slow down some of the older Android media players, but uh, everything now with the AM Logic chipset uh, plays it fine. And this player also with the Intel chip is playing it just nice and liquid smooth. And now we're playing some 4K footage here, and it plays back just nice and liquid smooth. The detail looks excellent, although it's actually outputting at 1080p, but still 4K actually does make a difference. If you look at YouTube videos that are shot in 4K, something about the processing, they're just crisper. But anyways, it does play 4K footage with no problem at all. And XPMC is also working very smoothly, and you'd expect it to because it's worked on Windows for years, and it works great on here, no problems. Now let's take a look at the Android version of the Z64. So it's the exact same hardware, same Intel processor, same 32 gigs of flash, except it's running Android on here. So you can see here we're running Minix's own custom launcher, which makes it real easy to toggle around and navigate to your apps, and especially to get to your media apps and then control them, especially apps like XBMC where you'd also need to just toggle. And here you can see I'm customizing out the launcher, so I'm adding my favorite apps to the main menu and this is sped up. By the way, this is running one of the newest versions of Android, 4.4.4. And of course, Android is highly customizable, so I went ahead and installed a couple launchers on here. This is Nova Launcher, one of my favorites. I also noticed that the Z64 is nice and responsive. Like when I'm navigating the Play Store and installing apps, it basically goes as fast as I can click my mouse. You don't have to wait for anything, and the downloads are actually really fast too. So it handles really well. There's something about a fast UI that just makes it enjoyable to use. So I tested the Antutu score and it came out really good at about 32,000. Still that's not amazing, but I think the quality of the software is worth more than a high Antutu score and it handles really nice on here. All right guys, I'm gonna take you out of here with a couple of pros and cons that I discovered during testing of the Z64 Windows and Android mini PCs. I'll add any additional pros and cons in the video description down below. So first the cons. There's no optical audio out, there's no AC Wi-Fi, and the boxes get a little warm during moderate to heavy use. And now the pros, which there are a lot of, so I'll just give you my top favorites. First off, the Android version had online update that worked right out of the box. Just click update and it was autopilot the rest of the way. Next, they both have super fast boot times. I timed the Android Z64 at 23 seconds and the Windows version at an amazing 15 seconds. I really like the snappy UI on the Android version and the Windows version was working great as well. Plus they both play back video perfectly. And also the Android version has iOS mirroring that works pretty well as well. Alright guys, I'll add links to all the hardware and software you saw in the video in the description down below. Be sure and like this video if it helped you out and subscribe to my YouTube channel, that helps me out a ton. Also, like me on Facebook. I give sneak previews on there, and that's the best way to talk with me as well. Thanks for watching, and as always, aloha.